Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Talent Culture's Tea Chat Radio. The world of work is live now on the radio with Megan M. Biro and Kevin W. Grossman because metal initials count. Come down to the radio. Take my hand to the radio. Come on, my favorite song. Welcome, everybody out there in Talent Culture Tea Chat Show land. It, it is Wednesday, November 18th. It's 1 p.m. if you're on the East Coast and at 10 a.m. if you're on the West. And, of course, somewhere in the middle if you're in the middle. And we are a week and change out from Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, for those of you in the U.S. that celebrate that holiday, which I know I cannot wait for. With you, as always, is Kevin W. Grossman. That's me and, of course, the lovely and talented Megan M. Bira. Hello, Megan. Hello, Kevin. Hello, community. I am yes for this topic today. Yes, that's all I know. Well, well, We're all going to be getting fat hey, and happy here in Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, isn't that right? isn't that what wellness means? Wellness means to get fat and happy, right, during Thanksgiving, and to get thanks <laughs> for guess. it too. Yeah, right? I guess. I yeah, think, I think that's going to change, but hey, maybe it's just me. <laughs> you know, well, as long as there's on. gravy, as long as there's gravy. I want lots of gravy. Oh, man. Gravy I know with that. that oil, that oil sheen on the top. Oh, yeah. For good yeah. measure, right? <laughs> for all of us. Absolutely. Ha- Hand all here. over the place. And and by the way, for those of you keeping score at home, Megan, I don't know how you like your leftovers, but what, my Thanksgiving leftovers are like on a big plate, heated up with gravy <laughs> everywhere. That's that's my, that's, that's yeah. the leftovers. Can't I wait. actually really, I, I do leftovers. I will do leftovers if I really like something only one day after. There you go. One meal with it. Um, and, yes, <laughs> I like I like stuffing. That's my thing. I oh, like yum. Stuffing. Yum. And yes, my turkey, too. I like, but my turkey's got to be organic. It's got to be well-treated. Sure. I don't want any hormones sure. or anything like that. So I'm very, you know, very passionate about that piece of um, being well, right? It's just eating well and knowing what's going into our bodies, right, and what the research tells exactly. us, all that good stuff. So, anyways, yep. great topic. I know it's something that can affect all of us on so many levels. Um, welcome, everybody, to another Talent Culture Tea Chat show. Um, I want to just take a moment and send some shout-outs to our sponsors, Dice, Mashfly, Career Builder, Workable, TalentWise, People Fluent, Smart Search, iSims, Vizier, IBM Smarter Workforce, and Jibe. Thank you so much for your continued support of these conversations um, in our community at, at large. So I'm very yeah. thankful for, for all as we go into the holiday season, of course. But, um, it's, you know, last Hey, Megan. Yeah. Megan. Yeah. I'm sorry, real quick. I, only because it's timely and you just really, I just, I know that you and I both want to send our well wishes and blessings to those around the world in Beirut, in Paris, um, of everything that's transpired Absolutely. over the weekend with the with the terrorist attacks, and just uh, God bless them all. So there you go. Absolutely, please. As I said to everybody, um, pray for the world. You know, don't we're, yeah. we're praying for Paris, of course, but we're praying for the world right now. These are very uncertain times. I think it's a much more complex battle than meets the eye. I think it's going to be going on for many, many years. Um, I think we're yeah. battling an ideology, basically. And when you battle an ideology, that has its own ripple effect, as we know. So, yes, praying for everybody. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for bringing that up, by the way. That's been a really, really yeah. top of mind and top of heart. But, um, yeah. you know, last week we talked about the benefits of a blended workforce and the staffing challenges it brings. And this week we're going to be talking about how wellness programs actually can improve employee performance. Making time to stay in shape isn't easy. I know this as well as somebody who's really, I'm really trying to make an effort in in my life to really be focused on that. You know, frenetic schedules, we've got longer work hours, you know, that can take a big bite out of exercise. Plus, according to the American Heart Association, 
Sedentary jobs have increased 83% since 1950, and physically active jobs now make up less than 20% of our workforce, which is kind of scary. It back, way back yonder, before I was born, in 1960, about half of the U.S. workforce was physically active. So, that's, wow, we've come a long way since then, we know, but what to do? You know, being physically active can boost the employee's health, good for business as well, right? I mean, actually, we have an ROI, I think, coming, coming to light, which I think is exciting. In fact, research shows that workers who exercise during the day reported a 15% boost in performance, a happier mood, and an increased ability to meet deadlines. So whether you can have an on-site corporate fitness center and be fancy and all that or not, there's simple ways you can help employees find time for fitness and support their overall health and well-being. So if you're listening right now to our podcast, and we sure hope you are, and you want to participate on the Twitter chat, either during the podcast portion right now, um, you utilize the hashtag TChat or the TChat Twitter chat portion immediately following our podcast from 1.30 to 2 p.m. Eastern or wherever you are around the world, do it. Um, the more the merrier. We are a, a learning community. and we, we invite everybody to participate. So thank you for being here. Yes. And let's introduce our guest. And I, I just, again, and I think I mentioned this to our guest when we did the video preview. But I, I'm a very active, healthy big daddy. That's that's, that's all I'm gonna share with you all right now. So, nice. so Anne Wyatt is the vice president of account management at Health Fitness. Uh, in her role, she oversees the national account management team and provides leadership support and guides strategy development for all the new health management and corporate fitness programs that they're responsible for, the transition of existing programs, employee recruiting and training, program quality assurance and operations management. Welcome, Anne, to the show. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Yes. Excellent. So listen, we always, so Anne, right off the the bat, we love to (laughs) always do a deeper dive with our guests before we start talking about the bigger topic and to give us kind of like their one, two, three background, more than what I just read in the bio of of where do you come from and why you're doing what you do today. Sure. So I've been with Health Fitness for the past 22 years, doing all those things you mentioned. But, you know, really I started out as an intern working at a corporate fitness wow. center and then worked through uh, many jobs within Health Fitness, just way, my way up to the position that I'm in now, which is the vice president of account management. And I oversee our uh, regional staff and the programs that we run across the country. So I've um, been doing this a while, and I'd like to say that I've seen just about everything in the corporate world, but uh, there still come a lot of surprises here and there. Um, but, you know, I think something I would mentioned to you, Kevin, when we were doing our video preview was that I, I like to think of myself beyond just, you know, the title of a, of, of a vice president of account management. I like to think of myself as a problem solver because I love a good challenge, and all the people that know me know that I'm pretty competitive and like to to fix things. So uh, all of my clients that I deal with and I interact with, they face all different types of circumstances and situations that are unique to them. They have different corporate cultures, different workforces, different leadership, but the common goal is that they want to make healthy actions possible for more of their employee population. So that's something that we at Health Fitness refer to as well-doing for more people. So knowing how to tackle the barriers that exist in the corporate culture and then translating that into healthy lifestyles is one of my favorite challenges, and it's a really big challenge, too. Um, But I should also add I have two teenage daughters, and that alone would give me the title of problem solver (laughs) with all their busy lives and everything that goes on. Nice. That would make perfect sense. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> so, Anne, what, I mean, I have to ask you this question. You've been there for many years as an employee. Right. Like, what about Anne, it, it, what about this whole corporate culture, um, product services makes you makes you stay in this role? You know? I mean, it's a long right. time. What's up right. with that? Well, I think overall, I I think I've found success in how I approach it. You know, one I have... Uh, within health fitness, we've always focused on what are your values and living them every day. And one of my values is all around balance. And I think that tends to be uh, a word that I like to use when I think about what we're all trying to do in our in our lives between home life and corporate life. And I mm-hmm. I feel like I I 
I have my ups and downs with balance, but overall that's what I'm striving towards, and I try to live it every day and know that what we do in our jobs within health fitness help people get there as well and help them see those changes, and I really get a real kick out of seeing that as well. Cool. Sure. I mean, what, what exercise do you do, Anne? What's your, do you have a regime right now? Do you want to fill us in on what's up with that side of your, uh, of your life? I do. I, uh, I've been going just to our local Y, and I take advantage of uh, just all the different equipment that's in there. But uh, over the past couple of months, I started running again. I dealt with some injuries, and now I'm back running and uh, really focused and uh, enjoy getting back into the swing of things with running. So that's uh, nice. my fun. Yeah. You're living your Yeah, life, that's right. Nice. Yes, exactly. I had to walk the talk. Yeah. So, so listen, Anne. Speaking of that, you had you recovered from some in- injuries. I've had knee surgery myself, and my running days are not completely over, but mostly I do. Mm-hmm. I run once a week on the on the beach. But speaking of of challenges across the board, though, right? That we know that mm-hmm. exercise is good for us, but what? What are some of those, and some of them are pretty obvious, but what are the challenges that you hear every single day from employees at organizations that are keeping them from working, not only their bodies and hearts, but their minds as well? That's the whole package, right? What are some of those right. main those challenges? You know, one of the biggest ones I always like to point out is that exercise is hard, and we have to make sure that we're acknowledging, acknowledging that right out of the gate. You can Mm -hmm. design a great program, have a culture of health at your corporate location, but at the end of the day, it's the actual employee that has to be the one that laces up their sneakers and take that first step. So um, I think that's where we start, but I see that probably one of the largest barriers we come across is time. You know, uh, Megan, you had mentioned uh, earlier, you know, people are always on, they're engaged. You know, we're busy, whether it's with work or family commitments and for many people, it's hard to set that time aside for exercise. Um, I think the other piece as well, though, is that people also might be facing a challenge in another part of their life that really prevents them from regularly exercising or even eating well. Our industry has really moved towards a whole person point of view where it takes into account not only the physical dimension of health, but social, emotional, financial, environmental. Yep. All those dimensions are important as well. So if one dimension is lacking, likely it's going to influence the others. So it's more than just thinking about how to get that workout in. Right. Oh, exactly. I, I, we're bringing our whole selves everywhere we go now, right? Absolutely. Yep. For, for better or for worse. We hope for better. We hope that everyone out there is working on themselves and, you know, caring for themselves and, and loving themselves in that way because I think so so often, you know, that's at the root of being unhealthy, right, is that lack of looking and giving yourself that attention and really looking into yourself, right? True, Mm -hmm. true. So, um, well, can you tell us just a little bit more about health fitness's programs and services? I kind of want to jump ahead and then then take a step back right now. I think everyone probably is curious to hear where you all fit into this spectrum of of services, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Yeah. So at Health Fitness, probably the easiest way to put it is we create healthy lifestyles. So when we partner with a client, we provide the people, tools, and the processes that make ongoing healthy actions possible for their employee population. So as I mentioned before, it's you know, we call it well-doing for more people. So what does that mean? We design and oversee the construction and manage and staff on-site corporate fitness centers And we also provide health management programs, and that includes on-site biometric screenings, telephonic coaching, uh, an on-site program manager that oversees the program. And we also have a series of branded programs and challenges that can be customized to a particular employee population overall. So um, that's probably the the two biggest buckets where we're offering services, but we do so much more, you know, nutritionists on site, physical therapists on site, um, really reaching out and meeting people where they are and the needs that they may have that might be beyond, be beyond visiting a corporate fitness center. And is there a corporate size that you focus on? Are you working with startups? Are you working with larger brands? I mean, tell us more about your clients. Who's signing up for them? Sure. So it's it's typically Fortune 500 companies, but as we look to expand our services, we're looking at other workforces as well, um, those below 1,000 employees, and uh, but it's typically larger employer groups at the present time. 
We mm-hmm. work with health plans. We work with uh, your traditional corporate locations that may be in technology or hospitals or um, you know, entertainment industry, the media, you name it. We have a client in that industry um, as well. Well, as you so, know, Anne? yeah, um, I was just going to say, you know, not everyone has access to these on-site fitness centers, and I know a lot of employees would love that. Um, can you give us more specific examples of how companies are helping employees to find time for fitness? in your programs or maybe not even in your programs, but outside of that? Like, how are companies collaborating on this right now? What's the status of that? I know, we know, I mean, I hear from employees all the time, they love those ideas of having, you know, yoga classes on site and massage and all that good stuff. I know plenty of people um, in really cutting-edge uh, cultures right now who that, that's being offered, you know? Right. So cool how do we have some so how we help them find time for fitness, you know, I think one of the things I, you know, that I mentioned earlier, you know, it's not easy for people. So making sure that you're flexible with your approach, whether it's from a logistical standpoint uh, in creating a culture of health that helps people feel that they're empowered to work out while they're on the clock. Um, leadership visibility and support, that's really important. So if rank-and-file employees see leadership working out during the day, it might send a message that it's accepted and encouraged, maybe even asking them to come along for a walk for a meeting instead of, uh, you know, just having it in a regular conference room. Um, We have many companies we work with that we work to set up an organized program, whether it's uh, something like a six- or eight-week walking program that might help people focus on how many steps they take and being physically active throughout the day and, and making sure they track them, not just during a workout, but uh, are they getting up from their desk or their workstation? If, you know, some people don't have desks they work on an assembly line. So making sure they're active, making sure their breaks are active. And even when they leave work, when they get home, they can track it as well. Um, you know, we have other locations where uh, they encourage at-desk workouts. So at a biotech client of ours, we host 15-minute energy breaks in conference rooms where employees can learn workouts that they can take back to their desks with them. And then those workouts are also accessible on the company's intranet so that they're able to oh, nice. uh, you know, make sure that they're able to access them. Uh, I love that. You know what? Yeah. Hey, hey Ann. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> it was just like when I heard that the first time that I, I'm smiling, not because I'm making fun of it, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to picture again. The, I know no, we talked about this before. I know where you're the going at, That's workouts, those. but, I but no, can, to, can you tell us? Can you tell us? Uh, give us some examples of what that looks like, literally, because we're on the radio. But you know, sure. What does that look like? Those, those workouts. Right. Well, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. You're at your desk, and you're using your desk. Home. I, I look at it as you're using your desk as a playground. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, you can sit in your chair very simply and do some stretches. Whether you reach over your head with your arms, I'm doing that as I speak to you. Um, you know, do yeah. some twists with your torso. Um, but then you can get out of your chair, and we, what we like to do when we do at some active energy breaks at uh, the locations that we manage is we'll have individuals uh, stand up out of their chair and they'll do some squats. Uh, they may do some lunges at their chair. They may also use the desk as, as long as it's not on wheels, <laughs> but use the desk to make sure that they're able to uh, maybe do a push-up against the desk or use a wall that's nearby. So. There's a lot of different things that take you, I mean, I think a lot of people think of an at-desk workout as you have to be sitting and it doesn't get you much, but you can actually get a lot of things accomplished uh, in your desk area maybe is a better way to put it. And that and that's important because the other thing that I brought up, because I, I met a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I had, I had driven to San Francisco in the morning, not a regular commute for me, but it was raining. It was the first time we had a big, big rain, which was good in the Bay Area, and it took me three hours and 20 minutes, right, to get right. to San Francisco, uh, which usually yeah. would take less than two, two hours. But we talked about this, but, but address this. What about those, again, I know it's things you can do at work, but, you know, folks that are commuting one to two hours one way, so round trip, you know, three to four every day, that's a huge chunk of time, right? A huge sure. chunk of time. So how, I mean, is it something that we just, they just have to try to get it embedded in their culture at work? What if they don't have an on-site program again, which we've already addressed, but, right? So what are some things that you would tell those organizations, those companies, and those commuters? 
Right. Well, you know, I think number one is to know that just because you can't engage in physical exercise, whether it's on your commute or in a corporate fitness center, doesn't mean that you can't focus on another dimension of your well-being. So, you know, depending on the length of your commute, you could use that time to think through your day, brainstorm, you know, listen to music, news, or, you know, even books on tape, um, or just enjoy the silence. You know, how often do we get to do that at times? But while yeah. everyone doesn't have access to a fitness center, I'd say the best way to look at it is think of what you can accomplish in short and convenient sessions. So, again, you take a walk with your colleagues, even if it's indoors around the hallways. Uh, the at-desk workouts that we mentioned or energy breaks throughout the day. Um, consider healthy food options that may be offered at the cafeteria. Or if you don't have an on-site cafeteria, you can pack for the week and make sure that you're ensuring that you have thought through what you're going to be eating for the week and make sure that it's a healthy option and then you're not left to, oh, I'm really hungry, I'm going to run out and get something, and it turns out to be the worst choice you could make. Right, right. I know. Yeah, we get lazy. It's scary. (laughs) It's scary being a human. We're so (laughs) complex. I mean, we want to do the right things, but sometimes we just don't, you know? Sure. We do what's easy, so... What I right. always like to say is make the, the healthy choice the easy choice, and then you'll make it much easier for your employees down the road. Yeah. What other cool and things helps with that adoption, you tell us about? Yeah, like what yeah. other companies are you working with? And give us some ideas, some cutting-edge programs that you're seeing. And, and then yeah. my, second, my second thought and question is, and are you adopting any HR technology or are you seeing companies adopt, you know, maybe gamification for wellness or, you know, wear, the wearable technology theme, right, and how, how it relates to employee engagement? Are you, are, you, are you seeing some of your brands that you're partnering with uh, adopt some of this cool technology yet or not, not yet? And we're just curious. You know, I, I asked I, you a load of questions, so how about <laughs> I'm it? I'm trying to figure out where do I start? <laughs> um, I'll, you know, I'll start with the questions. The, <laughs> I'll start with the new um, objects, you know, the shiny new objects out there. I think a lot of companies are looking at that. I don't know that a lot are taking the plunge yet. You know, I think some of that might have to do with cost, but what we try to always recommend to our clients is keeping it simple. You know, if they, we don't want them to get focused on the latest, greatest communication channel or that proverbial shiny new object. We want them to think through really going back to basics. What is the best way to reach their audience? and engage them in the programs that participants can have available to them early and often. So, you know, the best practices I see are uh, companies that tie into as many existing challenge, uh, channels as possible using multiple approaches, meeting the employees where they are. So also reminding them that they can't just think about their health occasionally. So you have to keep your program visible year-round. Um, and you can't, you can't think about redundancy. Think... Think like a consumer when you're thinking about your program. How many times do you have to see a commercial to get that message? So keep the message Mm -hmm. coming at them, and they'll eventually start to take notice of what's available to them. Um, But how are they – let me interrupt you for a moment. Sure, sure. How are they receiving those messages? I mean, we're pretty social beings now. We have social media platforms and wearable technology, right? I mean, how are they they actually receiving those messages in in your experience? Right. So we do have a we do have some some of our clients that are engaging in social media. Uh, I think that's growing. It's certainly not uh, something I've seen that's caught on like wildfire, oddly enough. So, and I think it depends on the workforce itself, the age and demographic that we might be dealing with. You know, we have some some clients where they don't have access to a computer all day. Um, we have some that, uh, oddly enough, they don't use smartphones. You know, we think I think we like to think as a culture that everyone what? uses a smartphone, but it exists. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have I'm sure. to yeah, we that, have to meet them where they are in that way. So it could be, you know, the ways that they're reaching out to their employees might be uh giving the senior leadership team speaking points to use every month, uh, to make sure that they are getting out key messages for the program. Uh it could be that they're uh you know, we have one client that is a candy maker and they're trying to get information out to their employees. I mean, just imagine trying to offer a wellness program to a candy uh, yeah, that's company. funny. You know, there's yeah. candy oh, yeah, everywhere, but they're yeah. completely successful. So 
Um, one of the things they do is at every location they have wellness champions that get the word out. So they become peers that individuals right. work with that are sharing the good word of what's happening in uh, the wellness program and making sure everyone understands what are the resources available. Um, there what? could be but- – go ahead, I'm sorry. Hey, no, Ann, but let's. But we're talking again about people going to to a central location, whether or not they have an on-site um, fitness center is one thing. But what what about? Are you seeing any trends in the for remote populations and virtual workforce that, that, that are constant? Sure. What we are seeing most times is really uh, having something available to them to track. So. Uh, if yeah. it's a program that they're a part of so that they can track physical activity, um, but having access to some central hub, uh, whether it's a website that they can go to that's specifically yeah. for the wellness program, typically can be accessed from the company's intranet as well so that they're able to feel that connection to the program and understand this, these are the tasks that I need to complete to get on that journey towards health. Nice. Okay. And getting and getting is, the messages out to them, it's that wellness champion as uh, one of the most successful approaches that I've seen. You mentioned telephonic. I, love that, yeah. one, uh, I wanted to touch on one more communication question that you you sure. mentioned telephonic, and as it relates to the the virtual workforce and remote, or just from location to location, is video being utilized more to communicate? Yeah, it is. Um, it is. I. Uh, we do see that uh, programs are being delivered by video or webinar, uh, whether it's a, a lunch and learn that talks about uh, stress or resilience, or it's something that talks about mindfulness, or uh, you get into vitamins and supplements. It could be a, a multitude of topics. We're seeing a lot more delivery that way. Um, I do know that many companies are are dipping their toe into offering coaching via video so that you can actually see your yeah. coach. Um, there's messaging tools that exist as well. So a lot of great ways, and, again, just constantly evolving how we can meet people where they are. Yeah. Well, not only Excellent. meeting people, Excellent. but offering incentives, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, to yeah, me, there's nothing important. more powerful tool than rewards, incentivizing people to do stuff, Right. Correct. I mean, healthy retreats, yoga, you know, massages, you know, having that all um, blended with technology, right? The whole gamification and leaderboard concept is, is humongous. Um, I know a lot of companies that are pretty cutting edge are starting to adopt there, but I think there's a huge, huge wide open market for um, just incentives and rewards and how that relates to employee engagement, you know? And I know and what I your experience has been on that front. I'd love to hear a little bit about that. And, I mean, oh, my gosh, we're, I'm looking. The, the It's 127 p.m. It Eastern. has flown. <laughs> Time is flying. So we can certainly uncover some of this more on Twitter. But um, would love to just hear from you on the, on that side, and then we can we can wrap. Okay. Well, as far as incentives, you know, we do see – the most success when companies are offering an incentive that really speaks to their employee base. So, um, you know, we have seen companies that offer an incentive that helps them focus on uh, what the reward is that's something that's going to mean something to the employees. So if uh, you offer an incentive to a very young population that doesn't have very high medical costs, maybe tying in your uh, your incentive to a lower benefits premium isn't really going to drive them, but maybe a paid day off is going to help them because typically those younger new employees to the company don't have a lot of vacation time accrued yet. So um, just knowing right. your workforce can really help you understand how you can best drive them to get something done. If if your, if your average workforce pay is six figures, if you offer them a $25 gift card to take a healthy action, they're probably not going to turn their head too easily because – that's not meaningful to them, but maybe it's something that hits them in their uh, benefits premium reduction that maybe it's they can earn $500 over the year in their benefits. Right. That's going to make a difference to them. Right. Well, we're about ready. The sands of the hourglass are, are, are dripping away, and we're going to jump <laughs> to Twitter chat. A quick reminder to everybody that next week is – 
Thanksgiving holiday for us in the U.S., so no tea chat. But we'll be back again the week after on December second. So we're taking we're taking a break, everybody, for that turkey and stuffing <laughs> and all that. So, so there you go. Calling over here. Thanks for being with us, and um, we'll see Thanks, you Anne. after. Thanks, Anne. We appreciate Thank you so it. Much. Yeah. I appreciate the time. Talk yeah, to you absolutely. soon. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you. Okay.